All right, let's dive into TSMC today and uh, their big bet on AI. We've got, well, kind of the usual suspects, you know, financial reports, some presentations from analysts, even some Q&A from the last earnings call. It seems like, well, everyone really wants to know why TSMC is so confident in AI, like it's going to stick around. Yeah. Especially, you know, when there's still questions about whether it's actually worth the investment. Yeah, I get that. I think a good place to start is just looking at their revenue. It's I mean, exploding might not even be strong enough a word, you know, <laughs> year over year growth is hitting almost 30% for 2024. And the thing really driving that is AI and no surprise there. The revenue they're getting from the processors specifically for AI servers. Well, that's on track to more than triple this year. Oh, triple. That's not just like some small jump. That's a full on AI earthquake. Exactly. And it's not just projections either. Like this impact is happening right now. TSMC's CEO, CC Wei, he actually shared a story from a big client during the earnings call. You know, the client said that AI demand is, uh, and I quote, insane. Insane, huh? I mean, I know AI is a big deal, but insane. That's next level. Makes you wonder what kind of crazy AI stuff is coming down the line. For sure. And Wei, well, he didn't stop there. He was basically saying that this is just the beginning. Like, we're at the very start of the AI era. Buckle up. This wave is going to get huge. So it's not just talk. TSMC is actually backing this up. I mean, mm. they're investing billions, right? Expanding capacity, particularly for those advanced three nanometer and five millimeter nodes that are so important for AI. Absolutely. And even though their capital expenditure for this year is a bit lower than analysts expected, they've made it clear they're playing on some serious spending in 2025. They're committed. Like they see this huge AI wave coming and they want to be ready. That makes a lot of sense. And also brings up another interesting point, you know, TSMC is going global. They're building new fabs. Just a quick reminder, fabs are those semiconductor plants, the super high-tech factories for chips. Anyway, they're building them in Arizona, Japan, Germany. Seems pretty strategic, especially since their clients are increasingly looking for chips to be made in more diverse locations. Oh, yeah, for sure. Smart move for a couple of reasons, actually. First, it's just directly responding to their clients, you know. Mm -hmm. Having those chips made all over the world, it helps companies diversify their supply chains so they're not so vulnerable to problems in one place. That's become super important, especially over the last few years with everything going on. Right, spreading things out. But isn't building overseas more expensive? Like, doesn't that eat into their profits? Oh, absolutely, it does. TSMC even admitted that these overseas facilities could mean their margins shrink by a couple percentage points, maybe 2 to 3%. But as their CEO, C.C. Wei, said, it's a trade-off they're willing to make. Making sure they can meet the needs of their customers is super important. Plus, a lot of governments are offering some pretty sweet incentives to get chip production in their countries. They see it as, like, a strategic national interest. So TSMC is kind of playing it smart, balancing the money stuff with making sure they're in a good position in the global AI landscape. So it's a bit of a balancing act, trying to keep costs down, take advantage of those government incentives and make their clients happy. That's a lot to juggle. But can they really stay profitable mm -hmm. with all of that going on, mm -hmm. especially with costs for things like electricity going up in Taiwan? Yeah, that's where things get really interesting. Even with those rising costs, they're seeing some really impressive profit margins, like better than anyone expected. Last quarter, they hit a whopping 57.8 percent, way higher than the analysts predicted. Wow. So even with costs going up, their profits are higher than expected. That has to be because they're so far ahead in the technology game, right? Ingo. They're the leaders, which means they can basically charge what they want. They even said, and I quote, that they're confident in their ability to sell their value, which probably means we're going to see some price increases coming down the line, especially for those super in-demand advanced nodes. Okay, now I see why they're so optimistic about AI. It's not just hype. It's like a perfect storm, yeah. you know, huge demand, smart global expansion, and being able to charge top dollar for their cutting edge tech. It's a powerful combination. And all of this is happening while people are still arguing about whether AI is actually going to be worth the investment. But TSMC's actions are speaking louder than words. They're not just dipping their toes in the AI pool. They're diving head first. Well, when we talk about those AI applications driving all this, it's pretty wide range, you know? You've got natural language processing, think like chatbots and AI assistants, that's booming. Image recognition too, that's what powers self-driving cars and helps with medical diagnosis. And of course, machine learning, that's behind all those personalized recommendations you see online. So basically, AI is getting into everything and all those applications need serious processing power, which means they need TSMC's chips. Exactly, and that leads to the, well, 
the challenges. One of the biggest is just keeping up with this crazy demand. Even with all their expansion plans, TSMC is still having trouble meeting their customers' needs. CCY actually admitted during the earnings call that they're way behind on advanced packaging, specifically uh, Coo OS. That's what lets them stack multiple chips together to make those super powerful processors. So even though they're doubling their Kawo's capacity this year and planning to double it again next year, it still might not be enough. That's the thing when you're at the forefront of a revolution like this. The demand is hard to predict, and scaling up production that fast takes huge investments and a little bit of luck, to be honest. Speaking of investments and going global, mm -hmm. let's talk about how TSMC is dealing with, well, geopolitics. Mm -hmm. We talked about those new fabs in Arizona, Japan, and Germany. What's the thinking behind that expansion? It's a multi-layered strategy, you know? Like we said, clients want more options, they want flexibility in where their chips are made, but there's also the geopolitical side. Having production outside of Taiwan with all the tension with China reduces risk. It makes clients feel more secure, especially those in the US and Europe. So it's not just about the money. They're making strategic moves to keep things stable in a world that's increasingly, I guess, interconnected. Mm. But all these new fabs, they must be expensive, right? Mm. Especially with those higher operating costs we were talking about. You'd think so, but TSMC seems to have a plan. Their CFO, Wendell Huang, laid out a few things that should help them maintain profitability. Building at scale means they can save money per unit, those economies of scale. They're also working with governments and suppliers to get the best deals. And of course, they can charge higher prices because they're the technology leaders. It's a delicate balancing act for sure. I'm curious about those new fabs, though. What kind of chips will they be making and who are they targeting? Well, the Arizona fab has been getting a lot of attention. It's a huge deal for TSMC and a big sign of their commitment to the U.S. The first one is already running, making chips with their four millimeter process. And they've already announced plans for a second one right next door. That one's going to use their even more advanced three nanometer process. Wow. So they're really going all in in Arizona. Is that all because of those government incentives or is there more to it? It's a combination for sure. The U.S. government is really pushing for domestic chip production with the CHEPS Act, offering billions in subsidies. But it's more than that. Having a major production hub in the U.S. makes American tech companies feel better. They're worried about relying too much on Asian suppliers. I see. So it's a win-win. TSMC gets those incentives and American companies get a secure supply of chips. Exactly. And it shows how important semiconductors are in geopolitics now. Countries all over the world are realizing that controlling this technology is key for their economy and security. Speaking of global competition, what about the fabs in Japan and Germany? What's the strategy there? The Japan one is interesting. It's a partnership with Sony, and it's focused on specific technologies like image sensors and microcontrollers. That's where Sony really shines. That fab is already up and running making chips, and they expect to ramp up production quickly to meet demand. So each of these new fabs is catering to a different market, it sounds like. What about the one in Germany? The Germany fab is similar in that it's focused on specific tech, but it's for different customers. They're going after the automotive and industrial sectors. Think like self-driving cars, factory automation, and the Internet of Things. It's fascinating how they're positioning each fab so precisely. But with all this focus on going global, haven't they been having some issues back home in Taiwan? Yeah, you're right. One of the biggest things they're struggling with is energy. Taiwan's electricity grid is already stretched thin, and TSMC's fabs just add to that. And as they keep pushing for even more advanced chips, like two metal meters, they're going to need even more power. That sounds like a real problem. Yeah. Did they talk about that during the earnings call? How are they going to deal with that energy challenge, especially as they keep expanding in Taiwan? Actually, an analyst named Brett Simpson from Arete Research asked CC Way about that directly. Why admitted it's a challenge, but he said they're working closely with the Taiwanese government to make sure they have a reliable energy supply. They've been told they'll get the electricity they need, but it's not clear exactly how they'll manage it. It's a critical issue. They'll need to be open about it to keep investors happy and make sure things keep running smoothly. Absolutely. It shows that even for a company as powerful as TSMC, there are always challenges, especially when you're at the forefront of technology and operating in such a complex global environment. It's a fascinating case study. And speaking of fascinating, let's get back to their financial performance. Their third quarter results were amazing. They beat expectations on everything. Give us the highlights. Okay, so their revenue for the quarter was a massive $23.5 billion. That's up 13% from the last quarter and a huge 39% higher than the same quarter last year. That growth just shows how strong the demand is for their chips, especially those going into AI. 
Those are impressive numbers. Yeah. And what about their profitability? We talked about them being able to charge a premium. How did that affect their margins? Their gross margin hit a record high of 57.8% for the quarter. That's up 4.6 percentage points from the previous quarter. Pretty incredible. It shows how their technology gives them an edge and lets them sell their value, like CCY said. So they're not just growing, they're growing and making a lot of money. That's a powerful combination. Their investors must be thrilled. Oh yeah, for sure. Their operating margin also jumped up, hitting 47.5%. That shows how efficient they are and how well they manage costs. And it's important to note that they have a ton of cash on hand, like $69 billion. That gives them a lot of flexibility to keep investing and ride out any tough times. Speaking of the future, what's their outlook for the rest of the year? And what are analysts saying about all this? They're very optimistic about the fourth quarter. They expect revenue to be somewhere between $26.1 billion and $26.9 billion. That's a 13% increase from the previous quarter and a 35% jump year over year. They're also projecting a gross margin between 57% and 59%, so they're expecting continued strong profitability. Sounds like TSMC is doing great. But we can't ignore the fact that the semiconductor industry is known for its ups and downs. What are some of the risks TSMC might face moving forward, especially with all the economic uncertainty in the world right now? That's a good point. It's not all sunshine and roses. The global economy is slowing down and there are worries about a recession. If that happens, demand for electronics could drop, which would definitely affect TSMC. And we can't forget about the competition. Samsung and Intel are spending a lot of money to catch up, especially in the AI chip market. How do you see that competition playing out? It's hard to say for sure. TSMC is way ahead right now, especially when it comes to advanced manufacturing. But Samsung and Intel are big players. They both have their strengths, and the competition is only going to heat up. So even though TSMC is on top, they can't relax. They need to keep innovating and executing well to stay ahead. Exactly. It's a constant race in this industry, and TSMC needs to push the limits to stay in front. All right, we've covered a lot. TSMC is a major player, and their success is tied to the future of AI. But before we wrap up, let's go back to something we've been dancing around, the question of AI's return on investment. Yeah, that's a fair question, and it's something people are debating everywhere. There's been a lot of hype about AI, but some people are asking if it's actually living up to the hype. Is it worth all the money being poured into it? Gokul Hariharan, an analyst from JP Morgan, asked CC Wei about that during the earnings call. He pointed out that some people have doubts about the ROI of generative AI in particular. What did Wei say to that? Wei was pretty clear. He believes the demand for AI is real and it's going to last, and we're just getting started. He even quoted one of TSMC's big clients who said the demand is insane. Mm -hmm. And remember, TSMC isn't just making chips. They're working closely with their clients to develop and optimize AI solutions. So they're right in the middle of it, and they're betting big on AI's future. But we also need to remember that there are concerns about AI. Things like the ethical implications, the possibility of jobs being lost, and the need to develop and use AI responsibly. Absolutely. Those are crucial conversations we need to have alongside all the technological progress. We need to make sure AI is used for good, that it benefits everyone, and that we're ready for the changes it might bring to society and the economy. It's a complicated issue with a lot of different angles, and one we'll definitely be exploring more in the future. But for now, let's switch gears and talk about another aspect of TSMC's operations that doesn't always get a lot of attention, but it's really important these days, their commitment to sustainability. Yeah, sustainability is a big deal. It's easy to forget about the impact all this tech has on the environment and, well, on everyone, really. But it, it seems like TSMC is trying to find that balance, you know, pushing technology forward, but doing it responsibly. You're right, they are. And they're not just talking about it, they're actually putting in the work to make a difference. So it's not just greenwashing, they're serious about this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Let's start with the environmental side. Making chips takes a lot of energy, everyone knows that. But TSMC is trying to reduce their carbon footprint. They've set some big goals for cutting their emissions and they're putting a lot of money into renewable energy for their fabs. Makes sense. But it's not just about the energy, right? What about all the water they use and the waste they create? They're working on those things too. They've got programs to save water, reduce waste, and recycle more. And it's not just them. They're bringing their whole supply chain along. They get it. Sustainability isn't just about checking boxes. It's about making it part of everything they do. It sounds like they're walking the walk. Yeah. But what about the social side of things? Like, are they treating their workers fairly? What about diversity and inclusion? They've been making progress there too. They want to create a safe and inclusive workplace. 
with diversity at every level, and they offer training and opportunities for their employees to grow. They're also involved in education, supporting STEM programs in their communities. They're especially focused on encouraging young people from underrepresented groups to get into science and technology. That's great to hear. And what about corporate governance? How are they making sure things are transparent and ethical? They've got a strong corporate governance framework in place. They've got clear policies and procedures to make sure they're doing things the right way and following all the rules. They're also transparent about their finances and they talk to their stakeholders regularly, like investors, customers, employees, the community. They wanna hear what people think and address any concerns. It sounds like they're really covering all the bases, but why are they putting so much into sustainability? Is it just because it's the right thing to do or is there a business angle too? It's both for sure. TSMC knows that sustainability is good for business, consumers want sustainable products, and investors are looking at ESG performance. That makes sense. So by being sustainable, they're not just doing good, they're also building a good reputation, attracting investors, and setting themselves up for success in the long run. Exactly. They're showing that you can be a leader in technology and still be a responsible company. This has been a really interesting deep dive. We've talked about their finances, their bets on AI and global expansion, and their commitment to sustainability. It's clear that TSMC is at the forefront of technology, changing the world in big ways. But as we wrap up, what are your big takeaways for our listeners? What should they be watching as TSMC's story continues? I think the biggest thing is that TSMC is at the center of a revolution. The decisions they make and how well they do will have a huge impact on the whole tech world. It'll affect everything, from the gadgets we use to the way we live and work. They're not just making chips, they're shaping the future of AI. Exactly, and they're doing it in a really impressive way. They've got the technology, the vision, and they're committed to doing things the right way. They're not afraid to take risks, invest big, and push the limits, but they're also focused on sustainability, being responsible, and making a positive impact. It's a great story, and it's definitely not over yet. For sure, this is just the beginning. The next few years are going to be crucial for TSMC as they navigate the AI era. They need to keep innovating, adapt to all the changes, and stay committed to sustainability. But based on their track record, I think they're ready for anything. So for our listeners, the message is simple. Keep an eye on TSMC. Their story is fascinating. It's about innovation, smart decisions, and human ingenuity. And as they keep pushing the limits, it's going to be exciting to see what happens next. The future is being shaped by the chips they make. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into TSMC. Until next time, stay curious. 